the Edzin just won the FC Pro Open and I am going to show you all the meta tricks that he used. So recently I made a video titled the new meta on FC24 and I specifically said crossing is the best we have ever seen since FIFA 19 and it was proven in this pro tournament as you can see in the following clips. So lesson number one is crossing. P8 Zin's game relied a lot on crossing the ball to Haaland on the back post and then knocking it down mostly for a tap in or sometimes he would go and score the header directly throughout the tournament. Like you can see over here, he uses the volley. You might argue it is because he uses team of the year Haaland, which is true, but you can create this mismatch on the back post with literally any tall player. For instance, Inform Sorloth, who goes for a whopping 25,000 coins. We can see how he crosses the ball consistently going in the wings, creating that overload which the 4-3-2-1 formation offers. I always teach you to use L1 square chip crosses and that is exactly what PL Zin uses as well. The L1 square crosses just give more loop to the ball, right guys? And we can see the overload that I always talk about. The 4-3-2-1 offers an overload with the full backs overlapping and he uses it to perfection. I am going to commit myself to mastering the 4-3-2-1 formation as well. So basically what ends up happening is that he creates an overload and then he has so many players inside the box either. He can go with the extra pass or he can go for the cross. At this time, he has mastered every mechanic. And the most meta mechanic right now is crossing. I will say it again. There is a consistent pattern that he has practiced and I urge you guys to practice as well. Have a tall guy at right forward or left forward, right? And then trigger runs to your fullbacks. Look at this. What happens? Theo Hernandez is tracking Ona. He baits him with left stick dribbling, right? Finds the space takes a touch, goes with the L1 square chip cross and knocks it down. This is a repeated pattern that you will see. Even the last goal he is going to score comes off of this. Uses left stick dribbling, baits a run and then goes with the L1 square cross to Haaland. I am telling you, this is very easy to replicate in your own gameplay as well. It's the final kick of the game. What does he do guys? He goes with the L1 square cross because this is a mismatch and whenever you will create a mismatch you will win it would be insanity to think that he only won because he uses crosses lesson number two is high pressing now high pressing is something we associate with anders weirgang but in this game p H. zin was very good at manual high pressing we can see how he consistently wins the ball high up the pitch and troubles anders even in the final goal it's his high press he sticks to him. Look, see what he does. You can argue that this is a mistake on Ender's part, which it is, but see, he forced him to make this mistake. And now, what happens? He pulls Maldini out of position. Why does he do that? Because if he doesn't do it, he can cross the ball. So essentially, he wanted to block the cross because that is the only effective way of stopping Haaland. The consistent mismatch in combination with high pressing just opened up more avenues of scoring goals for P. H. Zin. As you can see, that is why I always say, when you have a tall guy at the wings, it opens up so many more options, especially against good players. What do you do? Either you stop the cross or you bring out the goalkeeper. The most effective way is to essentially block the cross. See, once again, what is he doing? High pressing. How is he high pressing? He is using his attackers. I always tell you, if you use your attackers to high press, the opponent will struggle. But you have to do it strategically. You cannot simply just run, run, run. You have to force your opponent into making a mistake. Yes, I know you saw that goalkeeper movement. We will talk about it in just a while, so keep watching. What led to this final goal? Was it the cross? Yes, it was. But there was something more important which almost everyone missed out. Just see how he consistently wins the ball high up the pitch. With Bruno Fernandes, he was at him. Just see once again. What is happening? He wins the ball. With Bellingham, he manually tackles the ball. He sticks to him. And you can argue that Anders should have played the ball quickly. But, but in such matches, when you are playing for 80,000 US dollars, you are playing for a World Cup spot, the pressure is high. And Anders just gave in. But we have to give credit to P. Edson. This is manual pressing. It is the biggest skill gap. And if you master it, you will succeed. Let's talk about the goalkeeper movement by P. Edson. I truly believe this was the most game-defining moment of this match. Why do I say so and how can you replicate it in your game? Those questions will be answered. But first, I'm not gonna argue if this is the right thing to do or if it's logical or illogical. We are not going to argue about the mechanics of this game. We are only gonna focus on what can we learn. Like I said, truly a game-defining moment of this match. 
what he does is he pushes his right stick back and moves Loris into the goal. Why? It gives him more room, right? So now he can have a better chance at saving this. I believe in this instance, if Ender shot quickly, this goal would go. Theo wouldn't block it at this moment if he just shoots first time. But again, it is easier said than done. It is a game of chess at the highest level, like we have always been telling you guys since a long time. First, he moves him to the near post, then he moves him back. It simply enables him to have a higher chance of saving this shot. He was in his head. Because he was in his head, it prevented him from taking this shot. But if we move back, if we look at this, guys, everyone is saying that Hullet is at center back, this and that, guys. Hullet was being used at center back, not because he's a brilliant center back, because they had to use four SBC players. It was a requirement. In this instance, I believe he should win the ball because he is in the passing lane. If it was team of the year Ruben Diaz or Patrick Vieira, for sure they are winning this ball. For sure they are winning this. Hullet doesn't win this interception. It leads to this chance, game defining chance. Piet Zin was in his head and he ended up making the save of the match guys. Goalkeeper movement really defines games and this was one of those game defining moments. These were the meta tricks that he used but there is something more. I want to talk about the fundamentals and the 4-3-2-1 formation. Let's talk about the 4-3-2-1 formation and we are going to talk about winning only. guys. I truly believe that if you want to excel or if you're an aspiring pro or you just want to be very competitive, you have to master 4-3-2-1 formation and hyper motion since the next gen. This has been the best formation. Every year we see this formation being the best formation. I remember Omut and FIFA 22 won the World Cup using the 4-3-2-1 formation. Manu Bashor won the World Cup using this formation. Piet Zin won FC Pro Open using this formation. Anders is a player who loves the 4-4-2, like me. But even Anders Weergang is forced to play the 4-3-2-1. He was forced to master the formation because of how this game is. Now, if that is logical or illogical, if that is bad or good, that's a debate for another time. If you want to improve, you want to religiously play 4-3-2-1 formation. There are no ifs and buts. Every champion that I know, even personally, they use 4-3-2-1. Next up, like I always say, meta will only take you so far. You have to be fundamentally good. As the right stick switching, which is very good. Knowing when to switch, knowing how to switch, and how to apply pressure. These are the key things that are so good in PHN's gameplay. Then, he knows how to score from a Trivella. He knows how to score from a finish shot. He knows how to use German crosses. He knows how to use player locks. He knows how to create a mismatch in attack. He knows how to create an overload. He will always pass the ball where he is facing. He will pay attention to the little details. He will not make mistakes, which we usually do. So paying attention to detail and being a fundamentalist is something that we associate with top players like MS Tosari and now P. Edson. If you're not a fundamentalist, you will not go far. Look at this for example, guys. He does the step over to bait Davies into thinking that I am going to go with step over straight. But in his mind, he is focused on Ona. He just bought himself time so he can play this pass to Ona. It is easy to say that, oh, he's just crossing the ball. But look at how he was able to open up this goal scoring chance. At this moment, Anders is defending perfectly fine by tracking the run of Ona. But he has to do something. He has to make him react. It's a game of chess. So how do we do that? At the highest level of the game, since the skill gap is low, we do that by playing chess. He does the step overs, right? Baits him into thinking that he's going to go with the step over straight. That opens up space for him. He goes with the L1 square cross. Doesn't shoot first time, has the composure and takes a touch. Being calm, being composed, being clinical will take you so far. And these are the little things that you have to focus and replicate in your own gameplay. Now, if you truly want to master the meta side of this game, then I suggest you to watch this video because finish shots and control split isn't the meta, this is the meta.